What up, guys? CP the Tool Addict. Woo! Today's video is going to be all about the Icon Knife. That's right. I picked this up. You guys saw in the previous video. But I wanted to talk about it and give you guys an honest opinion about this knife. Kind of talk about it because it seemed like it was a pretty popular subject. So let's jump into the video because we got a lot of hardware to cover. Come on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today's is going to be about the Icon Knife. And I got to tell you, for some reason, I wish you could smell this foam. This foam, for some reason, smells amazing. I don't know what they did to it, but uh, they put something in it that makes it smell awesome. But we're going to talk about knives today because when it comes to a pocket knife, I may not be an expert, but I do, and I have, a lot of knives, as you can see. And I've carried a lot of knives over the years. So I have a pretty good taste for what I like. And maybe you can get an idea if you like something. And we'll talk about this knife and give you some real honest feedback. You know, I want to jump into this video by saying, first of all, if there's anybody that can... If, if a Harbor Freight can impress anybody, it's going to be me. They have to impress me the most because I'm the biggest hater of Harbor Freight. So... Uh, you know, they have a tall task ahead of them. So, uh, this is not paid for. You know, I bought it with my own money. It was like 40 bucks, I believe. Uh, I don't know where the receipt is, but uh, I, I can promise you I paid for it. And the, I've seen, and I've heard a lot about this knife. Okay, so it has a G10 handle with carbon fiber inlays. Um, so, it's kind of a fake G10 is what we're saying here. Additional resilience, blah, blah, blah. Premium D2 blade steel offers superior hardness. Uh, that sounds interesting. And wear resistance for long-lasting edge retention. Ceramic ball bearings provides a fast and smooth deployment. Curved grip to fit naturally in your hands accurate with for confident and accurate cuts. Low friction pivot point to reduce wear and extend life, knife light. Life Convenient access with storage and built-in belt clip. The blade length is 3.07 inches. Closed length is 4.42. And this is made in China. Okay? But it's designed in the USA. So, uh, for whatever that's worth. But anyways, uh, let's jump into the Icon knife itself uh, before we go into anything deeper. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about my history with pocket knives, Okay. First of all, I have a plethora of knives and a plethora of tips, and I am abusive to them. As you can see here, uh, you know, very abusive to my knives. I, some would say I'm terrible with my knives, to be honest with you. This is an Almar knife by Mac, a stiletto, and you can see it has a knife point tip. Now, once again, I'm not going to get too fancy on the, like, grinds and whatnot, but we'll talk about... Some of the things, you know, this knife I bought, I was on, it was kind of an impulse buy, and it works good. It flips out good. Uh, I found out that you do have to keep this tension on this, otherwise the blade won't set flush in there, and it kind of moves to one side. But <clears throat> not my, not my, not what I would consider a, a carry knife, something to carry. Now a lot of guys will go with uh, something that's more of a razor blade style knife, and I, you know, these are nice, and you can see. <laughs> As cruddy and dirty as this thing is, this gets used. This is the O-Knife Orticle Pro. And I got to tell you, this is my kind of my go-to knife that kind of hangs out around for box cutting and stuff like that. Uh, we've also got a couple other O-Knives over here, which have some nice grinds, nice finish, nice closing features on them, which I always enjoy. Which I always enjoy. Over the years, my go-to knives for pocket carry kind of have gone up and down. Now, as you can see... This is a LA police gear, and this thing has been beat, and I do like something with more of a drop point to it, uh, and you can see, I mean, this thing is just wrecked, but it's durable. Uh, even the night, even the rope cutting edge <laughs> has went through some really bad stuff. It's lost some, uh, it's lost some stuff in here. It's got missing parts. Uh, you know, the handles come apart on it. And I've went, I carried those quite a bit, and I thought they were great for carry, but I realized I was spending a lot of money. Well, actually, these knives were free. I would get these knives for free every time I went to a shooting match, so uh, they were kind of one of those things that was a consolation gift. 
Uh, the one knife I don't have is a Gerber knife that was much like this Mac knife. And this is a little bit too big for pocket carry for me. Uh, but once again, been a decent knife, nothing great. Uh, so I've also transitioned, and I carried this knife for a while. This is the Kershaw right here. And you can see I used it pretty good, pretty well. Uh, this one's called the... What is this one called? Definitely been in some pocket carry for some long time. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Uh, yes, it's dirty. It's beat up because this is a pocket carry knife. None of my knives are safe queens except for a few. Uh, some of these O knives that have came out, I do like this, believe it or not, with this translucent design. And once again, you'll notice the point on it is a little bit different. I like a knife. I found over the years that a knife with a more rolled point or a drop point on it is something that I like more than just a normal point. And unfortunately, that's one of the things we'll talk about with the icon that kind of uh, drew me off. But we've also had, I've been a big fan of Gerber's. This is a sheep's foot. So that was a cleaver style knife. This was a sheep's foot. Uh, and I found that I like those better because you know what? I end up stabbing things. And that's why I like these, uh, you know, rolled point edges here. I carried a lot of Gerber knives over the years. And, you know, the one thing I found is these points definitely came in to be something that I wasn't really a big fan of. I have some expensive knives that I carry. This is a Fro Fox Caramba with an Emerson Wave on it. If you don't know what this is, this is a true G10 grip knife. These are around, uh, I don't remember what this one was, a couple hundred bucks. But these are super knife, nice knives. Uh, they're a self-defense knife. And uh, I'm a big fan of Karambit. Uh, you know, they're just really nice knives uh, for self-defense. However, once again, not a durable carry knife. So my go-to knife for the past three years, and you guys who have been avid followers will know that my knife that I've been carrying, and you've seen this on the channel, is a Tough Light from Cold Steel. And I got to say, I, I had a Gerber that I carried, and I wish I could have found it because it was beat all the heck. That was my favorite knife. I carried that for about five years. This is the second longest running life that I, knife that I've carried in my life. And this thing is awesome. I love the drop point on it. And I love the, the jimping on the back of the spine. I also love how thick the spine is. Believe it or not, you can do a little bit of prying on it. It's not huge. It's only about two inches. It's just an all-around nice knife. It's got a durable belt clip that doesn't break off. As you can see, as I showed you on one of my knives, I have had a ton of problems with belt clips breaking that is a big huge issue and you, you might have heard me explain that before in fact i've got a uh we've got a the, the what's one of the problems that i had with my uh steering stream light wedge you can see right there broke the belt clip off of it snagging stuff on there a durable belt clip is an absolute must for me and this knife really fits the bank and not only that it's a 25 dollar knife so as you can see, I have a wide variety of knives that are all over the place. Now, one of my most prized possession knives, believe it or not, is this Rainbow Leak from Kershaw. And I, there's a little bit of a caveat with this. See if I can cover this up. This was uh, this was a special knife engraved for me uh, back in 2013 when I uh, became uh, Rookie of the Year. And this is absolutely one of my favorite knives. It's just the color changing that it has. You know, just really an amazing knife. This is just an absolute amazing, amazing knife. Look at the way the colors bounce off that. Absolutely awesome. So, yeah, that's one of my favorite knives. Not to mention it comes in a nice <laughs> serpa lined case. So, going on, once again, I go back to the Gerber. This was one of my uh, foremost carry Gerber knives. And as you can see... The only bad part about it was busted the clip off of it. But this one I've carried for a long time. Not my most carried Gerber that I've had. But once again, you can see very, very thick spine on it and some jimping. Uh, I like it. This is spring assisted. Very nice knife, uh, honestly, for the money. Just a good price on the knife. Which then brings us to uh, one more knife that I had carried for quite some time was a Coast knife. I have always been a big fan. I have a couple different coast knives uh they are they are also affordable and i think they're nice durable but this thing uh was a nice lock blade knife and you can see i gave it the business quite a bit too 
always being abused. And just for reference, if you think that I don't sharpen my knives and take care of them, well, I do a lot of work on my knives all the time and keeping my pocket knife sharp. But I will say the one thing about this um, cold steel tough light hasn't been haven't had to sharpen it much. It's been really really stout, and that's what I really like about it. It's held up really well. In fact, let's see if we can get a little bit of a demonstration. You know, gives a nice cut on it. Nice clean cut, which means that that's a good knife for me. It does what it's supposed to. However, I know we've went a long time into the video, and I'm sure a lot of you have been impatient and want to hear about the Icon knife. And I might have to cut out some of this, but uh, the Icon knife. So my first impressions of the Icon knife was when I picked it up was this is really impressive for $40. Honestly, I was like, this is a pretty awesome knife. I picked it up, and the first thing I checked was obviously the belt clip for deep carry. And then it has some jimping back here. Kind of disappointed. I wanted to see some more jimping on the front of the knife. The finger well right here was nice. Uh, once again, it's got that point on it that not really impressed me, but it is super smooth. Uh, for $40 in its class for a lifetime warranty knife, I will say... This is absolutely pretty impressive for the $40 knife uh, class. However, for a everyday carry for me, it doesn't quite meet the expectations of beating this knife right here. You know, when I have to go to a pocket knife to carry, I was carrying this for a week or so, and I just missed my tough light. I got to tell you, and it's quite a bit different. And if you look, it's kind of sheep's footy or cleaverish looking. So obviously I've drawn myself to cleaverish looking knives. But this is a $25 or $30 knife. I can't remember what the price of it is. And you can change pocket sides on it. Uh, that's one thing I noticed with this was... I'm not really sure you can reverse. No, you cannot reverse. So you can't change reverse sides pockets. Uh, you can't change the carry of it, which I thought was kind of a bummer with that. Um, I don't like... I wish they would have put a little bit of checkering in this. But what can you ask for for a $40 knife, right? I mean, that's the thing. It's a $40 knife. Will the blade hold up? It seems like it's pretty decent, but it's going to have to go through some abuse before it can get the seal of the approval on CP stamp. All in all, I give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, if I had to rate this knife, I rate this knife a 9 out of 10, and I give the Icon knife an 8 out of 10, and it was just pretty impressive. I was pretty surprised. And like I said, if anybody's going to be impressed, or if somebody's got to impress somebody, it is Icon. They literally have to impress me, or Snap, or Harbor Freight in general would have to impress me. But as far as a EDC carry knife, uh, this is more, I don't know what you would call this. It's kind of more of a all-purpose knife, maybe, something. I don't know. Uh, you know, the point is what really draws it off from me. After carrying all, you know, bunches of different knives over the years, uh, you know, I just find that I don't really like the points because for being a mechanic, now keep in mind, that's my thing. Being a mechanic, I tend to cut boxes and pry on things and, and wedge things and whatnot. And a knife that just isn't so uh, so pointed comes into a little bit of play. Now, I know it's abusive to a knife and that's not necessarily giving it a fair shake. But, you know, when you look at knives like this that are really... Uh, they're more for cutting, um, you know, how deep, this is a really, this would be called a skinny knife, this would be more for skinning and stuff like that, but a pocket knife, uh, and I love this little coast, or this uh, little case knife, I have a couple case knives, and I, it would take hours for me to show you all my knives, guys, so I apologize, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm really, really uh, kind of impressed with this for $40, I don't know how they pulled it off, but uh, they could have saved on the packaging, I think, they, you know, they went through a lot of work, for the packaging, and they could have spent more time putting some checkering on the handles, on the G10 scales, I think. You know, this has some texturing on it, which I like. It's more grippy. Uh, this is really slick. I would have liked to have seen some uh, more of a, you know, like some checkering like this. Just some adding some grip to it. And I would have liked to see some jimping right back here on the spine. I think that could have been uh, definitely an upgrade. That's why it, does, it gets an 8 out of 10 for me. So, for $40, hey, it's definitely something to pick up, and it's a lifetime warranty, so, you know, you can beat the crap out of it, swap it out, and take it back in, and uh, by no means am I advocating buying anything from Harbor Freight, but, or trying to be a salesman for Harbor Freight, 
At no means do I want anything from Harbor Freight, but there was a lot of chatter about this knife, so I felt, you know, with Harbor Freight, it seems like a lot of people will say a lot of things uh, just because they don't want to upset the masses. And me, personally, I don't care. Uh, my my view is is that if a tool is a good tool or a knife is a good knife or anything, the best thing you can do is be honest about it. And that's my honest opinion out of it. Is it the best knife in the world? I don't think so. Is it the worst knife? Absolutely not. In fact, there's probably several knives that I showed you that I would say that this knife beats those knives. In fact, most of these LA police gear knives, I'm sure, are right around the same price. And they, they absolutely kill them. I mean, these are just cheap throwaway knives. Uh, is it better than, than say, the O knife? Mm, no, I like this knife better. But once again, it has its drawbacks too. But you see, it puts jimping on the spine which I like, you know, when you're trying to bear down into something, that jimping helps you keep from slipping. Uh, it's got a nice firm grip that keeps you away from the blade. Uh, there's just a few things I like. Now, once again, it says a little bit, and the texture is weird, even though this is translucent. The texture is weird uh, because it actually grips. So, but even more so, it the blade is what really matters to me because it's functional. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe. Ring that bell. Remember, keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.